Welcome to History According to Bob. Today's enhanced podcast is over the effects of nuclear testing. And again, I've done an audio version where I've made references to charts. This is the opportunity to see those charts. Now this chart here is, is, is real important because it shows, of course, the breakdown of all the countries and, and what have you. But the important thing is how many weapons were exploded. And you see along the bottom is the number that's, that's years. So there's 1945, 1950, 55, 60, 61, 62, all the way up through 1998. Now the one thing to remember is that all the countries that you see here have signed the test ban treaty except France. They've done their testing in the atmosphere uh, most of the time. They haven't done that for quite some time. But uh, everything before 1963 is really atmospheric. There is underground testing, but most of that stuff is done on an atmospheric basis. And of course, that was stopped on the test ban treaty, where everybody says that they're going to not use atmospheric uh, explosions anymore. And if you look at the top, the United States has done 1,030 nuclear tests, 215 in the atmosphere. The Soviets less test but more in the atmosphere and some of one of those was a 57 to 60 megaton warhead and then you see the British the French and China and then everybody then goes underground so all the radiation and you're talking about radiation from nuclear blasts and tests that is going to be from that huge spike look at that that last year before the test ban treaty goes into effect a hundred probably 175 nuclear tests that year and then you have the big deal there and in, in 61 and then there's a 59 and 60 they're kind of making changes and then you see all of this now that is going to be where most of this background radiation is going to come from now we did most of our testing at Bikini Atoll and we talk in those areas and then this of course shows the uh, one of the various tests with the with the naval ships there and I've mentioned this before, but it's the equivalent of we've we've done enough megatonnage and testing here to have launched more than a thousand Hiroshima bombs in this area, practically one a day for you know years. So it's pretty significant. And then here's a view from <laughs> from one of the areas with the cameras. It was a little easier to do the testing with the atomic because they were pretty you know pretty good at figuring out how big the blast but when they did the first hydrogen bomb it went off bigger than they anticipated and of course this is the one that you see all the time in the movies and and various clips now when you do underground testing that doesn't mean you're not going to have scars this is Yucca Flats in the United States where we do a lot of our underground testing and of course it does leave little collapse spots and you will have radiation and that will gradually work its way to the top and of course this is the area where we also did our drop of that's, that's an artillery nuke and then you're going to do some maneuvering around in the belief that you could have tactical nukes and fight at the same time and of course the Chinese did this and the Russians did this and we did this and and probably a little lesser scale than the other two but uh, most of the people you would have seen here would have come down with uh, with cancer and what have you I've mentioned this before in one of my um, audio podcast that I had a student whose uh, grandfather was a commander at these tests and the one time they did a test and uh, they snuck their wives in to see a nuclear blast and his this boy's grandmother was with the had the flu couldn't go she's the only one of the officer corps wives that didn't die of cancer so this is a, a big issue with the radiological veterans in the United States Army and then you look at uh, what do these effects do. Well, you have the fallout. Now, this this shows, if you look at the latitudinal distribution, that's strontium-90. And you'll have most of the, uh, the strontium-90 between um, 60, or I mean 70 and 20 degrees north latitude. And you see that big blotch on the United States. That's because the testing from the Soviet Union and the testing from China came over and came down to us so we kind of get a, a, most of our radiation really comes from their testing 
most of our testing falls out in the Pacific. So it, it means we've got a little problem. And I've mentioned before that uh, there are works that talk about that we have been, we were watching the buildup of strontium-90 and other chemicals in the United States from 1954 on checking to see the, this rise. Now this is some of the radioisotopes that you're going to find in fallout. The ones they're concerned with is strontium-90 and um, cesium-137 and then also iodine-131 and you see the half-lives but cesium tends to be taken up by the plants as potassium and strontium-90 tends to also be taken up sometimes it'll lay on the uh, inside of leaves and and other things so you have to be careful with that that's what they're looking at this is the book I've been talking about on my audio shows the radioactive fallout soils plants foods and man this is a agriculture United States Department of Agriculture book about testing I mean they had 60 sites around the United States mostly in elementary school they checked diets they checked all sorts of things and then this is the legacy of nuclear testing uh, showing the uh, number of tests 1945 to 1992 but a lot of the radiation actually really comes from Soviet fallout because we don't really do that's all underground testing for the most part and then this shows the rise look at this this is the rise in strontium 90 and precipitation there's 1954 and then it gets higher in 55 and higher in 56, 57, 58, 59. Now 61, 62 are kind of off and then we have this, I mean 60, 61. And then 62 it goes way up again just before the test ban treaty. And notice it's higher in the spring. Well, that's when you get most of your rain. And a lot of testing is done in the fall. And then this shows the county by county uh, a, a radiation background uh, throughout the United States. You see that the lowest levels, blue, and the higher levels in, in dark orange, and it tends to follow the, the rain pattern, which comes down from the northwest, sweeps across the Midwest, and then will go up to the east coast. Another problem you have is in the area of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Kansas, and Missouri, there's tremendous lead deposits, so there is a natural radon background issue that you have and then this shows uh, doses in reds in the United States this is from this is actually these two these two colored ones are actually FEMA charts and I'm not sure you can find those online anymore I downloaded those a long time ago and again way up there to the north and we don't do any testing up there and then gradually comes down in the area where you have the testing uh, is pretty cool there's not too much uh, of a problem there and then this shows how they believe that you transport a cesium-137 uh, from the soil into human beings through their diet and if you're a chemistry person this is this is your thing here but the plants take it up and then we eat it and that ends up you know frequently in the bones and of course animals will then eat that and that gets into the milk and the meat which affect different parts of the body and then this is from can, you know, how you get contamination uh, from fallout the ecological mile for fallout and again it's it's a milk issue there's certain plants shallow rooted plants are much more troublesome because they believe in the fallout would just lay on the top so a deep rooted plant would have less of this chemical in it this is the final thing that they talked about in the book that as a result of all that testing again this is a 1962 book from the Department of Agriculture that you'd see increases in leukemia increases in thyroid cancer and increases in testicular cancer in the United States and that those rates would increase from 1960 until about 2000 when they would begin to level off and declining. Now that's in the US. Uh, the Soviets, the, or the Russians I should say, uh, they didn't even, you know, keep the people, there, there aren't fences to keep people off the site and there's areas where there are genetic mutations in just about every child.
that comes in. There's some really horrible stuff that they've done documentaries on and, and, and all sorts of things. So anyway, this is the visual part to show you what some of the effects are of nuclear testing from the 50s and early 60s. After that, you know, we really don't get much from it. This is also one of the reasons why, you know, there are most American cities in the U.S. have a higher background radiation level than Hiroshima and Nagasaki, even though we've never been bombed. And that's because we've been covered with fallout. So I hope you enjoyed this. And as always, don't forget to come by the website, sumahistorica.com or historyaccordingtobob.com and ask a question, leave a comment, check out the CDs, and thank you very much.